You know what I didn't do? Fuck. Good e uh oh can we hear oh wait yeah, Bobby, good, hear there we go good evening five fans welcome to another great head kicks and haymakers uh the video and played, then played, so that's where the, the intro messed up. You gotta love it, baby. Uh, welcome to another great episode of Head Kicks and Head uh, Haymakers. I can't even pronounce the own damn show. It is our UFC uh, 308 preview show. Uh, man, this ought to be a good one. Uh, headlined by Max Holloway and also uh, none other than the featherweight champ Ilya Tapora. But before we get into UFC 308, we got to talk about PFL's biggest card uh, last Saturday and the, uh, you know, returning of the heavyweight king, uh, you know, and Francis Naganu. Uh, Francis, again, showed that he can wrestle one more time. Uh, you know, showed that that wasn't no fluke against Surreal God. Takes down uh, the El Problema, Hendon Fiera, and then beats him to a pummel on the ground and pound. First round uh, knockout. Uh, and then just let the emotions pour out. Uh, this one was for Kobe, his son. Um, he, the the other th that that was the main story. It's kind of like, but now afterwards, it's like, what's next for Francis? Like, is it going to be boxing? Who is who does PFL? Who can PFL match him up with? Uh, there's nobody really out there. And then you, you look at the rest of the card. You know, kudos to Chris Cyborg. She gets a big win. And is you know legitimately everybody wants to see, and I know they fought. So, you know, Amanda Nunez is probably the GOAT, but Cyborg is probably 1B right now uh, in everything that she's accomplished in her career. Paul Hughes, who I got wrong, had a nice win as well, uh, beats AJ McKee. Uh, and then the underdog that we had no idea won uh, was the, the other fight. And then um, I couldn't, Johnny Eblen had a nice, you know, pretty much a dominating win over Fabian Edwards. Uh, Bobby, we'll start with you. Your thoughts on on the on the PFL? Ooh, well, that's a loaded one. Let me uh, <laughs> let let me take it back. What's up, let, let, Let's first go down with the main event, because um, you know I, I would assume that's what like ninety percent of the people were tuning in for. Correct. Um, you know, I kind of called for it last week. I thought uh, Francis would definitely implement some wrestling because if he was able to get El Problema down. El Problema's Problema would be getting back up. And uh, <laughs> sure enough, that's exactly what it was. You didn't have to um, worry about it. You didn't ever have to worry about getting back up. No. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, there, there were some, like, leg kicks thrown and stuff. But, uh, you know, all in all, my reservations for the fight was more kind of where Francis was. You know, not to uh, discredit El Problema, but none of it really – came down to what he was uh, going to do. It was all, how can Francis recover from the knockout? Where is Francis's head going to be? How is Francis doing with the layoff? And um, he stuffed all that shit in a locker, and uh, it didn't look like he missed a day. Um, he looked very, like, well-rounded and confident. And, uh, you know, if you told me that his last two fights were in boxing, I wouldn't have even known. He uh, looked like he, you know, stepped right back in there. And, um, you know, he made a point to uh, make it dominant. And I think he kind of showed that uh, competition wise, the PFL really has nothing for him. Um, hmm. And there was really a tear gap uh, in the competition. Now, um, you know, granted, but Bobby, they could, their five best fighters could match up with the UFC's five best fighters. Just. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get to that. Don't worry. Uh, let let let's uh, keep giving the flowers to the man that absolutely deserves it. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I was uh, extremely impressed in the performance, and I thought he was relatively, you know, 
not going to handle him with ease, but if he was able to uh, make the uh, fight of the walk, I think he was uh, going to hold out there. Um, you know, it reminded me a lot of uh, he, he just looked very calm the the entire time like i was wondering like is there anything gonna like get going with the intros and stuff i kind of thought the walkouts were a little uh lackadaisical definitely didn't see that a uh, spear budget but that's yeah. kind of a whole nother can of worms but um when it comes i didn't to see the anything action, that matched the spear budget by the way yeah well i mean wh when it comes to the fight itself he pretty much showed hey, this is MMA, and I think the performance he had, it couldn't have gone any better for I'm back in MMA. Because, I mean, with all the next questions of what is he going to do next, I think it absolutely should be MMA. But, um, you know, I don't know if they're going to really be able to go off their own roster or, uh, you know, wait for the heavyweight tournament that very few people care about to spawn his next opponent. But honestly, where I'm at with it is, in my mind, he's Floyd. I could really give a shit who the opponent is. Anytime he fights, I will be tuning in to support uh, Francis, like undoubtedly. Yeah. Now, all that being said, I definitely have some ideas of where I'd like uh, them to go and stuff. But overall, for uh, the fight itself, you know, I know some people are a little bit uh, unhappy uh, with the grappling aspect of it. And, you know... I get it, but uh, at the same time, there's a reason it's MMA and it isn't boxing. And, you know, it was pretty clear when he got that takedown, El Problema was not getting up. You know, there was that small moment where, uh, you know, he got the triangle in. I think that was a little bit, uh, you know, blown out of proportion because of his, uh, you know, jiu-jitsu background. Because, you know, Francis adjusted and uh, just pounded the fuck out of him. Uh, Big Dan consistent as hell in uh, letting people get beat the hell up. But yeah, he was, I mean, he was done. I thought the fight could have been stopped uh, uh, a couple minutes, a couple seconds before. Uh, but uh, hey, it, he just it, let him lay there. It, it could have, <laughs> but in that scenario, uh, I'm more than okay with it because there's a lot on in that fight. But uh, all that being said, I'm not sure what he was looking at because he was clearly out. But, um, yeah, no, hell of a performance by Francis. And, uh, you know, hopefully he can take the time. Because, like, keep in mind, he didn't even need to do this fight this year for the PFL. This is a commitment he made because he is just straight up a man of his word. And, uh, you know, the sport would be a lot better off if there are more guys like him in it. So. Whoa, whoa. We're we referring to, to famous people with a lot of money? Oh, um, you know, it, it not not that wasn't necessarily a shot at him. It was more a, a broader horizon of a lot of other people. Ding, ding, ding. Understood, brother. Understood. What's your uh, what's your takeaways here uh, uh, from like the Francis and, and kind of what you from the PFL in general on Saturday? So let's uh, first start off with uh, PFL, the, the, the spectacle itself. I, I don't, you know, like when you watch award shows, you know, we watch, I, I'm, I'm from that generation where at one time award shows meant something. You know, you watch the BET Awards, you watch the MTV Awards. Uh, you might even mess around and watch the CMT Awards, the Country Music Television Awards. You might just. And the, the award shows would give you a gist of who, like how great the artists were. This past year, the BET Awards was trash, apparently. I personally did not watch them. This is the equivalent of PFL trying to have an award show, very much like the MTV Awards, but it ended up being the VH1 Behind the Music Awards. I think that they needed to spend more money on production value. There was so much going on that I think that they could have attended to. So many people out in the audience that they could have highlighted, that they could have spoke with. I think they missed the opportunity to do that. The, the, the people at UFC get paid the money they are they get paid because the production value is crisp it's clean the transitions are great the people uh doing the interviews and the crowds are awesome you know the the interviewees themselves are hyped about you know talking to the cameraman if they do you know giving predictions all of that stuff adds to the production value 
of an MMA event, and I feel like they missed the mark on it just a little bit because it looked great. I, I think if we were there, I think we would have been excited about uh, viewing, you know, the fights and and, and uh, the ambiance. You know what I'm saying? The 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 accoutrement is so to speak, right? But it just they just was. And look, maybe uh, little Gabriel agrees. And, and the whole point is, it could have been better. It was right. I'm talking about the, you know, I think me and Bobby was 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 texting uh on, on Twitter slash X or whatever. Make sure you go follow all of us on, on social media. And I was like, yo, what do you give it? And like right when I was like, it's gotta be like a four or five. I think you I think Bobby gave it like a six or something. And I was like, cause cause bro, like they they really the opportunity that they had for the eyes to have been on them for there to be no other MMA, they could have scored big. And I think they dropped the ball on this one. I think they're going to learn a lesson in all. But in terms of the fight, the main event, bro, the, I don't know if there's very much ever else that's going to touch you in a fighting ring. Like, I, I don't know where, you know, all of, we got a lot of viewers. Shout out to all of our viewers. Shout out to Bodkin's friends who, re, who retweet the show all the time. Shout out to Bobby's friends who retweet the show all the time. Shout out to my people who watch it. But this was one of those events where if you caught the, the vibes, it was touching. Ray Lewis, for Christ's sake, ladies and gentlemen. Ray Lewis was in the ring sharing the moment. And if you don't know, Ray Lewis just recently lost his son. I was like, this is amazing in terms of the, the connection that they want to make to the general public that this person who they're going to. Ronaldo was with, in, the, in, in the bath, too. Yeah, Ronaldo, the, I, it, part it of the, the team. It was a it was a connection of stars that I think that literally the PFL missed the opportunity to grasp. Does everybody feel this? Does everybody feel Francis? Does everybody know what's really going on? And it would have hyped it up a little bit more, especially when he won, because I was like, "Yo, that, that I, who I don't think I, I'm gonna beat anybody's ass if Ray Lewis talks to me before the fight." You know what I'm saying? I'm knocking everybody out, but in terms of just the fight itself, um, man. Once again, Bobby hit the nail on the head. Uh, Francis didn't look like he lost a step. I don't think that even though El Problema is a bigger guy and, and is stature-wise larger, I don't think he was even he's even on Engano's level. Um, and it was kind of proven like that. You know, we've seen really big fighters, really tall fighters go down in a myriad of ways. And and this just adds to the list. I can't. I'm thinking of a, I can't think of the guy's name that I'm thinking about from the UFC. Really tall, really Guff, not Gustafson, ball headed guy. Volkov, Alexander Volkov, Volkov. Um, there's another one. He was young. He was like six nine. Even no. Struth. Sorry, no. yes, yeah, Steven Struth. Steven Struth. Steven Struth was huge compared to that. But when he got in there, you know, his skill set just didn't match up to the people he was fighting. This was one of those times when Francis is just all over willpower showed and just like bobby said bro though it was like four or five shots where i was like oh hey yo in oh, this and it is over you know what i'm saying all of a sudden the mario coins came out and the, his legs went limp and it was a wrap and i and i think that was right when i you know they, they called it but you know for me the 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 end result is seeing a man who's gone through so much adversity who's literally been, Who's probably at one point in time felt like he was at the top of the world. Um, and to see him literally give himself up vulnerabil vulnerably to the millions, the thousands, hundreds of thousands, thousands in attendance, people watching, people streaming, and, and cry out there. I think that that was deep. This to hear that story, uh, he did with uh, Brett Okamoto, and he, he tried to get to Spain seven times, bro. Seven times, That's like, I mean, the adversity is. Francis Ngannou's middle name, and he has tr truly, truly transcended each and every obstacle. And I, I'm, I'm proud to say that I'm a fan of his, and I'm, I, I'm actually excited to see what they're going to do with that PFL Africa. Because you know, had he lost, bing, bing, bing. it would have been a whole other story with PFL Africa. But because he won, they're going to hype that up. So one more time, and clap to uh, Francis Ngannou on his win uh, in the PFL Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, I I don't really have anything other than to add what you guys have had other than I mean Francis is a, his uh, he, his life's a movie. I mean, he's a, a bona fide hero 
uh, sp something special. Uh, Bobby, you had some thoughts on uh, Paul Hughes and Don Davis. I'm going to let you go ahead and, and cook for a second on, on all that. Yeah, for sure. One last um, – what I ended up tweeting about the fight was uh, fight 7 out of 10, production 0 out of 5 or 0 Ooh. out of 10. Uh, yeah, that, um, you know, I <laughs> – it, especially for a pay-per-view. I think that's why I was so harsh on the production. But uh, let's be positive for a second. Because uh, big news, Paul Hughes completely delivered. I was very high on him. I picked him to win. I thought he'd win. But I did not think he'd have that much success. Uh, Almost got he, McKee out of there in the first round. He mm. was that close. Like, I, I literally thought AJ went out when he hit him there. Um, you know, he kind of seemed to gas. Um in the second round, which he kind of admitted to in an interview, but uh, he also said he had a very uh, bad camp. So the fact that he looked that good with a bad camp, with a bad camp, yeah. Just imagine if he had like a full solid camp. So um, I, I, I thought he looked fantastic. I thought the uh, call out of Usman was on point, and uh, that kind of brings us to the crossroads and the problem we're at. Because this isn't even just for Paul Hughes. You can apply this to the main event. You can apply this to the co-main event. Like Cyborg, Francis, Paul Hughes. Who are they fighting next? And this is PFL's biggest problem. Um, like for the Paul Hughes aspect of it, you do not put him in that stupid tournament. Um, you might want to earmuff the kid too, because I don't. I might say something uh, inappropriate, but it'd be right here. Uh, so, like, like pretty much like him calling out Usman. Usman then coming out today saying that he'll probably be in the UFC in the next two years. I don't know how you fuck this up and not book that fight next. I mean. Don admitted today they have no idea what they're doing with the future of Bellator. It all kind of seems up in the air, but it would be a travesty to send him to the PFL tournament. Like that is just like, hey, let's take all the air out of this win. Because a lot of people were just expecting him to get handled. They're like, oh, this is way too big of a step up. You know, what are they doing? For once, it actually worked out for him. And if they put him in that tournament, they're just going to undo all that like that. With Cyborg, what's next for her? Honestly, I think they should do a rematch because there is absolutely nobody else for her to fight. Like, point blank and simple. Like, and uh, don't even get me started on, on the Francis side of it. Um, that, like, if that fight showed me anything, again, I will still rewatch it or watch them if they're coming up. But nobody in the PFL has anything for him. Mm -mm. Um, like, like point blank, period. I think if they want to do something big, you get in touch with one. They're always talking about how, you know, they're the co-promoter. PFL, obviously. One doesn't say that shit. But, you know, I know uh, Anatoly, the heavy, the triple champion, their heavyweight champion, has a fight coming up. I mm -hmm. expect him to win that. And that is the MMA fight I want them to book for Francis. Like, that would sell. It Give me that a thousand times over some, you know, modified kickboxing or something. No, nah, I don't want any of that straight MMA. And the fight to do it is with Anatoly. Like, this is the fight I wanted to happen when they signed him to the PFL. I knew it was very unlikely it was going to happen, especially since Don Davis doesn't watch fucking MMA. But, you know, <laughs> admittedly, that is yeah, a whole other like, side thing. But before Don Davis did this interview and all this stuff happened, like on Saturday, some stuff started tweeting about um, a fighter being in a coma from a weight cut. And that, you know, PFL had issued a gag order. I've seen some articles use that word. Others saying they weren't want to comment. So at that point, they were getting some, you know, pretty bad press. And ironically, this was right when the pay-per-view started. You know, I saw lawyers like tweeting Don Davis directly saying, hey, can you comment on this? 
obviously he's not going to say anything. But then like when he did, it almost kind of felt like he was putting his foot in his mouth. Now, to his credit, in with that question, he kind of answered it saying, you know, we're respecting the family's wishes, so we don't want to do that. So, you know, I can take that as a wash and wait for more information to come out before I'm more critical. What I will not sit down for is this nonsense about him trying to claim, oh, well, we can't touch the UFC in pay-per-view. That was probably the one truthful thing he said. But then he went on to elaborate saying all of our other shows match their other shows. For one, I don't even know how that's possible considering the man doesn't watch MMA in the first place. So all that proved is, hey, I'm full of shit. I'm going to keep flinging shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And literally the entire interview that he did with Mike Heck, it didn't sound like he was talking to the fans. It sounded like he was talking to the fucking shareholders, just like it does in every interview. And, you know, at, at a point, you just got to just pull him out of there. Like, I would take Dan Hardy lying to me a thousand times over this. At least Dan Hardy knows what to say and what is not going to just get the fans to be grabbing their head. What's A so, saying here? Because he's been following this too. Read this. Yeah, A says rewatch his response. To, he didn't even address the gag order. Just said they didn't comment on it uh, for respect. Yeah, so I mean, I could see them going. And he said Heck didn't even uh, ask about the gag order. Appreciate it, yeah, A. Thanks I mean, a lot. I, I could totally see um, that kind of being the answer. And that will, you know, buy him a week or two, um, you know, and they can kind of just go, oh, we're respecting the family. But, you know, eventually they're going to have to, you know, answer for it. Uh, I know Cyborg alluded to it being on her corner and stuff. And a lot of people are asking why was she cutting the weight? So um, in that specific scenario, I'm going to give it some time to see, um, you know, exactly what's going to come out of it because i don't really see the uh story going away but um that entire interview like credit to him to standing in there and doing it but i just felt like i was watching a jv softball game <laughs> like at no point there was any pushback on any of the nonsense he was saying and i, I feel like the reason he said he didn't watch mma is because he didn't want to up a UFC fighter, which is like ridiculous. He has so, no problem tweeting and mentioning him about yeah. him. And but, we, we talked about that last week as yeah. well. And I mean, granted, we did not see him all last week. Like when we did our breakdown, he had not talked. And I think that yeah. was definitely helping him. And then he came with this whole Dana's scared like thing like they're not scared they not i don't scared. know if he's trying right. to get people to laugh like people were trolling him in the discord using it but no like dana is laughing his ass off stuff his like that is just like proof that he'll never be able to touch him he, and, here's uh, what i said uh, uh to and we'll to kind of wrap up the end up and then we'll, we'll go into the ufc 308 real fast i said this before Don Davis and really uh, Tony Khan, I'm a wrestling fan too. So like, and he has the same problem, Tony Khan at AEW and um, uh, Don Davis have the same problem. You are the smaller promotion and it's okay that you're the smaller promotion. You're the newer promotion. Do not compare yourself to the, the, the organizations that have been around for 30 years. Right. Uh, WWE case longer than that. Don't compare yourself. Don't even you can maybe compare yourself. Hey, we are only five years in. This is where they were. We were. Don't even compare yourself. Don't even talk about them. Don't mention them. Promote your product. Promote your best. Promote your best. Say, I feel like, hey, we got the best. These are our best fighters. We feel like we got a great match tonight. You know, we got the, you know, uh, Francis Nagano who knocked down Tyson Fury, who's held world titles and other other promotions uh we got chris cyborg on this card because you know promote promote your people don't ever speak about 
the, uh, the 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 other people. Like unless somebody I ask you a question, and then you just say, "Hey, I think they got some great fighters," but I'm not focused on. I'm not focused on uh, other fighters or, or other promotions. I'm only focused on putting the best fights I can here. And I'm watching other people, other organizations. I'm trying to bring the best fighters that I can to my organization. This is what I have to offer. That's what you do. You promote your organization and build from within. And you're not looking at, you're not trying to compare yourself to an organization that's been around 30 years who is a stockholder. First of all, they're stockholders. They're, they're that's how big their organization is. They're on the damn stock market, you know? Mm -hmm. So like you, you have no back backing and you can't hold a, a lighter to them. So don't compare them. That's where you get in trouble is when you're trying to compete. Don't try to compete. Just promote your organization. Try to do the best that you can uh, in promoting your product, the very best that you can. So uh, that that's, that's where I'm at on, on Don Davis. Especially when the one they're comparing themselves to, you can hear the passion. Like, granted, Dana's gotten a little laxical with power slap and stuff. But prior, when he talked about the sport, you could tell he lived and breathed it. Unlike yeah. Don Davis, who can't even ask a question, answer a question about what his favorite fight is. Like, in that case, you're being too honest. Make some bullshit up. Like, you know, <laughs> that answer is an answer that he says to the shareholders because, you know, none of the shareholders watch it. So it's yeah. like, oh, I can get away with saying. And you saw that Anthony said he's like, oh, I should have kept that one in the bank. But uh, yeah, Don, you know, you need any other suggestion. My DMs are always open, but please it's, stop yeah. talking like rehearse yeah. it in a mirror. It's, All right, it's let's, going, get, let's, let's, shift here and let's get back to the big boy league. Uh, again, maybe fight of the year. Um, the one of the most anticipated fights of the year that's going to happen this Saturday at UFC 308. Uh, and that is none other than the featherweight champion, the El Matador Ilya Tapora, against none other than Max Blessed Holloway. Uh, to me, this card is the prelims are, um, but uh, the main card is really good, especially the last three fights. Um, you even got uh, Lerone Murphy and Dan Ige. Uh, but we, we start, we'll start off uh, at the bottom of the card. You got uh, Shara Bullet, uh, who is uh, the four, is fourteen and zero, is the favorite at minus one ninety. This is the third time we've seen Shara Bullet because uh, it's the only time he can fight is uh, overseas, obviously. Uh, and he's taking on. I was surprised that the odds are closer. Uh, Armin, um, I can't even read my own hand handwriting here. Is it Petrosky or something like that? Uh, who is nine and three and at plus one thirty five? I did look up. Uh, oh yeah, it is Armin Petrosian. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I did look up Armin. Armin actually beat Robocop once uh, a couple years ago. So he, it's not like he's hasn't beat nobody's, but. Uh, I was surprised first on the odds. Uh, who you like in this fight and why? Oh, man. So uh, to start it off, first of all, I want to give you guys a big round of applause. Can you try with the, AF, uh, the PFL a new one? Thank you, Bobby. Um, but let's go <laughs> ahead and go to the, to the new card. Uh, right now, man, let's let's take a look. So I, I've got, of course, I've got a feeling, right? And I, and I really like my guy, Shura Magomedov, Shura the Bullet. Um, very, very much one of those guys where if you catch one of his fights, his box office only been to the scoring card three times, 11 wins so far. He's been in three different, uh, promotions so far. He's been pulling out wins left and right, but I think in the last, what, I think one, two, he's been pretty much putting guys out, but he's been to the, the what, the, he's only gotten decisions in the last two. I mean, the UFC's only sometimes. had decisions. Yeah. Right, yeah, and I'm I'm thinking in real life, somehow, some way, this will play a part into this. He's not gonna let this one go to the scorecard either. Gabriel is agreeing with me, as I can see. Um, so I'm going with definitely I'm going with the bullet on this one. The one eyed pirate, there's something about his aura and a guy that can only fight in one place, unlike a guy that's further up the card who couldn't fight anywhere due to his inability to maintain health. We're just gonna talk about what we got right now, man. So I got Shara. 
Bullet Magomed off on this one, bro, for the first fight. What about you, Bobby? I love that which showing off being able to pronounce the last name all good. Mad <laughs> Um yeah, you know, th this is probably definitely uh his biggest test, you know, because most of the times they try to, you know, um give him someone that um will unapologetically stand with him. But uh, you know, at the same time, he does have uh grappling. You just don't really uh see it he obviously uh prefers to strike but um you know i think definitely being on the pay-per-view uh, i expect him to carry himself a little differently and um for the most part i uh have been lockstep in thinking that uh he'll uh get out of there with the victory i'm just more curious uh if it's gonna be a finish or not or if he's gonna um kind of get tested in round two you know, I know uh, his last fight, he spent a little bit of time on his back and he dropped around, but I think he still ended up getting a unanimous uh, decision um, yeah. on the last one. But, um, you know, especially with where it's located, I think the judges know what score to turn in. So, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, in all seriousness, uh, I think he'll be able to uh, get it done. But, you know, we're right there to where th this is going to kind of show because, you know, he got real popular over in Russia doing uh, fights that were like similar to like the influencer boxer thing. Yeah. So it's very unique to kind of see him not only in MMA, but in the biggest organization. So uh, how long can they keep that rolling? Uh, we're going to find out on Saturday. But uh, for now, I'm going to pick him to uh, get the win there. All right. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. Uh, give me, uh, give me the share. Give me the bullet here. Uh, I just think that I, I don't really. I mean, to be honest, I don't have much. I don't really have much knowledge of the other guy, and I just feel like they they're trying to build the share of bullet, uh, the bullet into you know this star that they can continue to plug overseas. Uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting because I don't know how far he'll be able to go. He's on a new contract. Uh, as well, so they're gonna have to start giving them harder guys. But how much of those guys uh, can fight? You know, is he gonna be able to fight over over here in the states? Doesn't look like it because he has the. We all know he's blind in one eye. He can't even fake it like uh, my guy Michael Bisping. So, but uh, give me give me the bullet, baby. Uh, winning uh, winning this one. All right, so uh, hey, throwing out the numbers like I always do, guys. Appreciate so it, on they got a uh, Magomedov by decision on Tapology by 84 uh, percent. That's out of 2,871 votes. So it looks like we're all in agreement with that one. With the bullet taking the W, most definitely one uh, on the first fight. Yeah, uh, our next fight is uh, a, a featherweight bout, number 12 versus number 14. Number 12, Lerone Murphy, 14 and 0. He's the favorite here at minus 290. He's taking on Dan 50K Ige. Uh, Dan's 18 and 8. He is the dog at plus 235. Uh, remember, Dan, I feel like Dan's getting screwed here. Remember, he stepped in on the 48, 24 hour notice or 12 hour notice, whatever the hell it was, to take on Diego Lope. Lopez uh, at UFC it was at uh, International Fight Week, so 303, I believe. And, you know, he's like, I want to fight on the sphere. And they're like, nah, you're fighting nowhere near Las Vegas, Dan. <laughs> nowhere fucking near the sphere. <laughs> See you later. Thanks for your work. Uh, hopefully they gave him a nice fat check for it. Uh, we haven't seen Lerone Murphy uh, his last in a, a little while. Uh, his last fight... Uh, he did take. Uh, he did beat Leonardo uh, Barbosa uh, uh, his last time out, and uh, that was uh, May of this year. So, uh, Bobby, I'll go with. I'll go to you here. Who do you like here in uh, Lerone Murphy versus Dan Ige? So, on top of them giving Dan Ige the stick, um, <laughs> they said, "Hey, fight this crazy undefeated prospect." And, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, that's why we love Dan Ige. He's like, yeah, give me the contract. And, um, you know, um, that is a very intriguing fight. I'm interested to see how that first round goes. 
because, you know, Ige definitely has that style to where he kind of seems to get better as the fight goes on. Um, you know, I, I expect Murphy to throw a bunch of feints and stuff. We all know who uh, Dan has in his corner. So we know I'm all about that corner. Um, but it's a really tough one uh, for me to pick there. You know, I'm if I was betting it, I'd probably uh, take a flyer on Ige. But I can kind of see uh, why the line uh, was like that. Now, granted, cor correct me if I'm wrong. The last uh, Murphy's last fight was at the Apex, right? Uh, let me uh, UFC Fight Night. Yeah, he was a main event. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I remember just being like, "What?" Because I, I think there was like a London card like the following week or yeah, something. Yeah, or like yeah. the week, or like two uh, weeks know, later. Yeah, Tip he got a fight of the night that night too. To the right. the night. But um, you know. Uh, Dan has to be completely perfect uh, for this fight. And I just uh, think that uh, Murphy will probably be able to um, probably close the distance and uh, win two of the three rounds. I would expect this to probably go to a decision. Um, kind of surprising myself here because I had a feeling that uh, I was immediately going to pick uh, Dan Ige. But the more I think about it, um, I think I am going to be going uh, with uh, Murphy to win pretty reluctantly. But uh, I think that's uh, what might end up happening. I hope I'm uh, not completely wrong, but uh, it would be great to see Ige get the win here. You know, he said on Embedded, he's already gone home from Abu Dhabi with an L and he doesn't want to have that feeling. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be hella motivated. And, uh, you know, let's just see uh, what will happen. But uh, I think I have to pick Murphy here, unfortunately. Mm. Go ahead, Whit. Man, all right. So, like I always do, boys, you know, we got to, we got the heart in the head with this one. But this is a tough one. Um, for me, I got to I gotta be honest. I got a chance to watch that Lerone Murphy fight. Although it went to the scorecards. Um, he did get UFC fight of the night. Um, he got that 50 grand fight bonus. It was crazy. Um, he looked incredible in that. He, I was about yeah. to say to me, that, and that was like, you know, you know, sometimes you just, and, and it was, and it was the main event. So it was one of those days I was like, all right, man, who is this guy? Let me just stop and watch it. It caught my attention. Um, he kept the pressure on. He's not too much of a back down fighter. He's it, it wasn't as if I was going to go to sleep. Y'all know me. I got sleep apnea. If the fight's boring, what? I'm going to sleep. But um, it, it 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 showed me that he's got the heart. And you know, Bakins knows, Bobby. You know, the UFC fight makers are those guys are, are, are sticklers for putting stumbling blocks on great fighters' ascensions. Dan Ige showed us exactly who he was on his last bout, put his heart on the line, didn't care, signed the contract, don't know, don't matter who it is, where it was, whatever. And now they put Lerone Murphy in, Murphy in front of him. I don't know, man. It's, it's kind of one of those situations where this could be uh, Lerone's night. Um, and, and we just, we just got to, you know, pay attention to it from now on because if people, even if it's if it's by decision, um, if he beats somebody like Dan Ige, that's that puts the the, the division on notice in my mind. Uh, right now, Tapology's got it, uh, eighty percent to twenty out of two thousand nine hundred forty seven votes. We got Murphy by decision, uh, but the majority of but the majority of the people that voted for Ige got it got him winning by knockout. Um, so I'm rolling with Murphy on this one. I'm gonna keep it one hundred, and uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking it's gonna go to the scorecards again, but he's going to keep the pressure on just enough to go ahead and get to the money one more time on a big pay-per-view out in Abu Dhabi where the money flows like oil from the ground. Uh, I think this could be a fight of the night type thing, really. Like, other than the main event, I really do. Like, I think the main event could be fight of the year type caliber, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But this fight, to me, uh, it's got fight of the night. Like I think this could be a fun one. I think you're gonna see a, a. I think you're gonna see a lot of standing and banging. Both these guys love to stand uh, and love to throw them hands. 
I, I like Danny Gay. I feel like he's getting the raw deal. I really do. Like, I mean, you step in on 24-hour notice and you think the UFC is going to scratch your back. And I'm sure they did in his pocketbook, but uh, they did him no favors here. Uh, Lerone Murphy is a very good up-and-coming prospect. And I don't even know if you're really a prospect when you're ranked 12. Uh, um, I, I'm, a, I'm with you guys. We're all three again in, in step with uh, Lerone Murphy. Mm -hmm. Dan is definitely the perfect fighter to beat that task, though. So yeah. like, that, that's why it was so like, uh, you know, I, I don't even like feel that good about the pick because you know how he could definitely um, be the one to give him that out. You guys yeah. know what it is, man. We got Dan Ige and then on the other side, we got Uncle Neil Magny, a bunch of fights. You got to fight him at least one time. If you don't fight him and win, then you ain't nobody. So we got to we got to see Lerone beat Neil Magny if he's going to be somebody in the UFC. How about how about this? We got one, two, three, four uh, undefeated fighters on this card on the main event on the main card. Straight up, that's wild. Uh, and, and we got to one guy who only has one loss, and that's Ankalaev. Uh, he is. Uh, Taking on uh, Rakic, uh, I was looking at the rankings here. Uh, I forgot what they're. What is it? What is Ankalaev's number one or two? Uh, Ankalaev's one and Rakic is five. So you got number one versus number five. First of all, before you get in, pick this fight. What does Ankalaev got to do, Bobby, to even get to a title fight? Because he's even come out and said, like, if I don't perform well, they they still might skip me. Oh man. And if they're telling him that, like, <laughs> like uh, that draw, that draw with Jan Bohovic with the title on the line, that's just that like got like salt in Dana's wound or something. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it has got to be. It's like Dana just wakes up pissed off every morning. Yeah, well, you know, you compare it to someone like Khalil. You know, like he knew what time it was. He he's like, oh, I got a title shot. I'm gonna yeah. fight for the fucking title. Mm -hmm. Where like on the light, that whole fight is like, well, I'll eventually get something going, mm -hmm. and then you know, then he's dumbfounded. It was a draw. I personally think he lost that fight. A lot of people will tell me I'm crazy, and I thought he won. I thought he lost that. I thought he lost that fight. So actually, I watched the first two rounds. I fell asleep. Uh -oh. So I really, I fell asleep. So I, and then I woke up in the fifth round, and I was like, "What the fuck happened?" Because like I, and then they're like, "Oh, it's a draw." I'm like, "How the hell was that a draw?" Because like I had Jan Bohovic win the first two rounds. Like, I'm, like I didn't understand it. So Still all that same. being said, I was very clear after the round tree fight that. I want on Goliath to be next. Um, you know, I think it's time for that. Mm. I, you know, I think uh, Potent would do fairly well with him. I mean, people like town him like he's some like unstoppable wrestler or something. You know, that it, he, his, he has some grappling in his game, but not like, you know, the Khabib grapple, like heavy set, like style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, um, a big part of me says, you know, Angliath has heard the criticism. Because, like, you know those words are coming straight from Ali. So Ali was extremely blunt with him in telling him what he wants to do and probably looking for him to show some action. And that is the biggest reason I think this actually might be a fight. Because mm. if it was just like, okay, on Goliath is just going to on Goliath, it would be pretty obvious to me that he was going to win. But, um, you know, he with the added pressure put on him, I'm curious if uh, that is going to affect him or not. Um, but at the same time, I think he knows that this is his last opportunity and he's going to put everything into this performance. So that being said, I think this fight will end in a draw. Um, a draw? Wow. No, no I, 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 I'm I, straight clowning. I, I, I got my Goliath winning. But don't okay. be surprised if it's a draw. 
Bro. Uh, Which, what's your thoughts here? Uh, it, it just, so, Bobby, if he wins, though, does he get the get the title shot? The, the door prize. If he lays on him for 15 minutes, I doubt it. Um, if he, he goes has, out there and knocks him out, then yes. He's got to have a finish. He's got to be thinking if like If he knocks him out, I would love to see the UFC's excuse for why he's not getting it. Mm. Um, you know, I want Angolaya to treat this fight like Finney on the Contender Series treated it <laughs> when he came back for the third time. He made a hey, all or nothing, Dana. baby, all or nothing. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm going to show your stubborn ass. So that's what I want to see from uh, him. And if we don't see that, you know, you better learn how to speak PFL. Oh man, yeah, not got long on here. If, hey, if there's we... hey, there's Francis's next title fight, the uh, Uncle Liam. Uncle Liam go ahead and move the heavyweight at PFL to take on Francis if he there wants you go. a title. Um, no, I don't hate that. Uh, well, you're welcome. You're welcome, uh, Don Davis. If you don't watch UFC or you don't watch MMA, maybe you'll watch us. We'll help you out. <laughs> there you go. I was just about to say that. Put Don Davis on the tweet, ladies and gentlemen. Put Don Davis on the tweet. Uh, uh, Real quick, Uncle Ive is 19 and uh 19 1 and 1. He's the he's the favorite win at minus 380. Uh he's taking on Rakic, who is uh the dog at plus 280. He's 14 and 4. Two of those uh four of those uh two of those losses back to back. Uh he lost to uh remember he lost uh to Yuri at the UFC 300, and then before that, uh he lost to Jan Bahovic. That was the fight he got injured in. Uh, what's your thoughts here on uh, presumably could be the number one contender spot in the light heavyweight division? Um, you know, first of all, I think it's pretty dope that they get to the point where, you know, you don't have anything else to show but this. And then what's behind door number one? Ding, ding, ding. A fight with the scariest motherfucker in the, in the UFC. Poetron, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? Your 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 winner, your prize is po is is Poton. <laughs> right, yeah, that's, that's exactly what you win. So um for me, man, once again, we, we've been talking about you guys pretty much hit the nail on the head, man. In real life, uh Uncle Live has done everything but show us that he could be not considered number one, except for with that draw. Rockage is not the Rockage is, is once again the UFC likes to put stumbling blocks up in front of you. Rackage is the fight in which if he pussyfoots around in this ring uh and does and did and I think uh I think um Bobby said it, it's not the Dagestani on your back, tackle you, pummel you for five round type of fighting wrestling. It's more um what I would what you would call like Greco Roman. You know what I'm saying? It's real, it's real hands-on, it's real going for legs, it's real single leg takedown ish. It's not necessarily take down and get on your back like we saw uh Muhammad do. Uh, but but that doesn't mean it's not effective. Um, I think the effectiveness of Rakic's hands will be where the fight is kind of like at a stalemate. If Rakic could somehow, you know, block some takedowns and put and keep uh keep the hands on um you know Uncle Live just enough, this may turn into you know something where you we do end up in a stalemate, possibly Bobby. Thank you for saying it. You stole my thunder on that one. Um, but in re in reality, if it goes the way that the bookmakers make it, I, I see it being a win for Uncle Live, but a win for Uncle Live by like split decision. I really don't see it being, you know, too much of a you know knockdown drag out. You know, it's him point the finger at him, but. Even a split decision, in my opinion, still gets him the opportunity to see Poetan in Brazil in 2025 in like May. You know what I'm saying? And 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 then I, 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 why why not? You know what I mean? Who who else are you gonna put up there? But yes, if 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 it if it goes wrong, it's because he went out there, he didn't give it all he got. Just like you said, Khalil Roundtree went out there and died in front of everybody. And normally told us, yeah, I was getting socked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to go out there. Uncle, even though Uncle Live is the number one contender, you got to go out there, Uncle Live, and put it all on the line and show us that you are not going to have us fall asleep like Bakins did 
when you caught that draw. Um, yeah. So there you go. I'm going with uh, I'm going with Uncle Live, but I'm going with Uncle Live on split decision with this one, bro. Man. He's a he's a minus three eighty. So that frankly is not good enough. No, like oh, yeah. Dana White's first thing at the press conference will be he's a minus three eighty. He should have finished him. Complete dick rocks. Like so. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, Bobby. <laughs> Uncle Live has got to go for the finish. Yeah. Uh, he he really does. It's weird to say that, uh, but at minus three eighty, and Bobby's kind of right there. Especially at you this know, level, it's weird to say, but that's the yeah. reality we're in. But this is what yeah. I'm thinking: because if if the pressure is on for him to go for the finish, is that where Rocket Rackage capitalizes? Because he's not known for going for the finish. You know what I'm saying? But is this where is that where Rackage capitalizes, catches him off guard? Maybe hits him with a hook or something, and gets him on the ground. Who knows? I think that that is a possibility. More, so, I, like, I, do too. I, do, I do. Go ahead. I do too. I actually, do. I, I think that the pressure of him knowing he has to go in there and put on a finish and kind of get him out of there could leave a hole for for Rakic. I'm just kind of looking at. So really, if you look at Ankalaev here. Like he, his last two fights were Johnny Walker. Now he did knock out Johnny Walker, but these days, Johnny, we could, I feel like we could knock out Johnny Walker as much brain damage as he's taken. Um, <laughs> he did take out Alex Smith and Tiago Santos, but that was way back in. Um, so really, he knocked out Anthony Smith in 2022. Before that, he hadn't had a knockout. Uh, until he knocked out uh, Cudabella. Like Anthony Smith, but 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 you knocked out Anthony Smith. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Hey, and I'm looking at looking at Rockets here. He does have the two losses: unanimous decision, unanimous decision. Uh, oh, he lost to Old, uh, Otis Meyer as well. He did have a TKO back in 2019, so he hasn't had a finish in 2019 either. So, see, this is what I'm thinking about right here, right? Yeah. Trying to I, I but what if he does that? That's like saying, hey, Kareem, go play basketball, but do everything except for take a hook shot. Kareem is known for taking hook shots. If you make him do anything else, it's not his It's not his forte. That's where you mess up. That's where you get caught slipping. That's where your jaw is open and Rackage lands one and puts you on your face. And then you get we saw we saw Rack we saw Yuri finish Rackage. Now, according to Rackage, he had staph infection, was in the hospital yes, prior to that, uh, like earlier that week. So there's a lot of stuff, and he still went out there and, and fought. So um I I'm gonna go on Kaliev. I don't I th I'm gonna go on Kaliev by decision here, I think. Yeah, so I'm thinking split. Um, <laughs> We, we are all lockstep three for three. I think this is probably where things start to change the tide oh, here. Yeah. Uh, we get into I, – I, I forgot this was a five-round co-main event. Mm -hmm. I know how it is. Mm -hmm. uh, huh? I believe it's three. because I was No, it's five. They got five on there, bro. Because they were asking media today, and what Robert Whitaker's like, why would I fight the other two rounds if I didn't have to? And oh, is he, is he saying he's going to knock him the hell out? Or? I think it's three rounds to protect Shemaev. Hmm. I thought it was five. Everything I've read is is five. It's five. The, I think the too. initial fight that got canceled that was the main event, and I think a lot of people assumed that this would also be a five round fight. A, but I, I could be Google wrong. Google. But I just listening to the media, it sounded like it was three. Hmm. I thought I read. I thought I heard today it was five rounds. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the chat could look it up. I'm gonna. I'm looking it up right now because that's gonna. That could change the way I pick. Right. Oh, it completely does for me. Um, yeah. Um, but, we got A says it's five on Tapology. It says it's five. Yeah. I, mean, so I think you're. I think five. you're the only person, uh, Bobby, that uh, says it's three. That's why you don't do bong hits with your coffee, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it says, uh, yeah, this said Mark on uh, Google, it says this will mark uh, Chamayo's first five round fight. Okay, and that cool. comes from MMA Chunky. Okay, so Chunky, uh, I on my Instagram too. Champ, what's going on? 
I see you pimping. You know what time to it is, clear, man. Shout out to the Falcons. So to be clear, Robert Whitaker is 21 and 7. Uh, he is the dog at plus 200. He is the number three ranked middleweight. Uh, he is taking on number 13, Hamzat Chamayev, who is the favorite at minus 245. Uh, it'll be one year ago that we saw Hamzat Chamayev fight. Obviously, we saw Robert Whitaker fight uh, earlier this year uh, in, in a fight. This fight was supposed to happen earlier this year. Robert uh, stayed on the card and got his first finish in a while. Um, and here he is uh, saying, hey, I'll still take on. Um, this is his second fight of the year, third fight of the year. So uh, to be clear, too, he beat uh, Paulo Costa in the unanimous decision back in February. I forgot that fight was in February this year. Yeah, uh, like in June. So Whitaker's been pretty active this year, one of the more active uh, years Wit, I'll start with you. Uh, this is Hamzat's first five round, uh, you know, fight, bro. All right, so let's let's take it back to the old school, so to speak. Um, when I when we when we were getting this cranked up, we were thinking about it. We Hamzat just came off of uh, a, a crazy, crazy tour of getting in the ring more times than anybody I've ever seen during COVID. And then magically his immune system goes kaput. And then we have to wait two years to see him fight. Um, the last time I got a chance to put eyes on him, he was in the ring with a uh, 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 what week worth of camp, Kamar Usman. What? At middleweight. Yeah. At middle, at middleweight. And I, my friends, was not impressed. <laughs> not at all. So now we got him going up against. Robert Whitaker, uh, Robert Whitaker, who is, in my opinion, you know, one of the scarier gentlemen in the middleweight division. Um, really only took some tough losses to him, um, and has been extremely busy this this past year. Like, uh, by convention. um, he fought in June, and in I'm I'm one of those fans. Uh, what like a, what, the, like, idea of the idea of being realistic, being realistic. um and, um, and, and like Robert like, Whitaker having a two fights, fights under his belt, under his belt. Re like, like you know you know like, 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 like he's an older fighter but like you know back in the day my granddad gave me a uh, 1985 Chevy Impala it was big it was a Chevy it was white. White. And I had to and cut the car on car 20 minutes before I got it in the winter or it would be a brick. Robert Whitaker is that box Chevy, and he has been sitting outside for 30 minutes. He's ready to go. I don't know if Hamza Shemaya is, is understanding what's going to happen. He was scary two years ago. Yes. He was the wolf. Nobody wants to fight the wolf. Oh, alhamdulillah. You know, all of that crazy stuff he was doing and scared everybody in the ring. I think the the, the shine has rubbed off of Shemaya, so to speak. And somebody like the Reaper, Robert Whitaker, goes in there. Puts hands on him now, not just regular hands. Now, wrestling, I'm not talking about no Greco Roman, not no Dagestani. I'm talking about get your get get your get your chin strap on. I want to see this one because it's it's a matchup made for um the the scene in Abu Dhabi, which the Emirates like, who put in the money so we can have big fights like this. And and this is what I anticipate. It says five. It ain't going five. Um, Hamza's not seen five rounds before. I don't think he's going to see five rounds Saturday either. I'm looking at this going out early, man. And I'm looking at Robbie do his thing. Uh, third, fourth round finish. TKO status. And it being and it being a, a, a one more time. Robert Whitaker's got to be feared as we go boop, up the ladder towards from three to one and possibly seeing the champ in 2025. So, so I'm going with the guy, Robert Whitaker, on this one. Even though I like Shemayev coming back and finally having Coil, not having sickle cell or a uh, staff or, um, you know, pneumonia, whatever he had. You know, God God, God bless his, his health. But um, definitely going with Robert Whitaker on this one. Uh, shouts out to the guy, man, the Reaper. Bobby? Ugh. Um. 
so that's kind of where I was uh, last week. Um, I thought, you know, Whitaker's been far more active, and uh, he's pretty used to being at middleweight, and uh, he's looked pretty uh, damn good lately. I think he's definitely had, ever since that Drakus loss, he's had quite a resurgence there. Um, I was blocking this fight out for a good two months because, you know, with everything going on with Jemai, you never know if he's showing up. Um, Even today's Wednesday, I, I won't believe that he's fighting until he's in the octagon on Saturday. Yeah. So all that being said, um, you know, the things I wanted to hear from Shemaev, I actually heard. He sounds completely humble now. Um, and he got, like, he hired a nutritionist. And he, he still has some of the same training partners, but he brought in certain people. I think a big part of his problem was overtraining, and he, you know the sickness would be because he like tried to train through it and stuff, and then his body would just shut down. Um, with all that stuff intact, and with them honing in on what he's good at and his skill, I think this could be a very scary fight. Like if we we might actually get that Chamayev from uh, you know the COVID days and stuff like that. Mm. So, um, but that being said, you know, Bobby Knuckles is looking more than tested. It's really going to go how that first round goes. Um, if Whitaker gets out of the first round, how will Shamayev look in rounds two and three? I, I'm not even really thinking of the championship rounds because I'd be really surprised if it went farther than three. Um, I, I would think either Shemaev is able to get it done early or uh, Whitaker is able to stop him. And, uh, you know, pretty much from Shemaev uh, getting tired and gassed. But, um, you know, they're saying Robert's looking for his chin, whereas Shemaev is looking for his uh, leg. You know, Chamayev does have some decent striking, but uh, let's not kid ourselves into thinking he's going to keep it standing the entire time. But um, all that being said, with all the momentum that Whitaker has gained, I think a lot of people have forgot how dominant Chamayev can be with pressure. Hmm. And I think he is going to be able to use that. And for some reason, I cannot get that Drickus loss out of my head when it comes to this Chemayev matchup. Granted, you know, Whitaker makes changes every camp, so he's obviously not the same fighter. But uh, that is why I'm uh, leaning Chemayev. And I'm pretty surprised because the last two weeks, I figured I'd be picking Rob on this. But uh, I think Chemayev is uh, able to get it done in the end and get his hand raised. How that happens, I'm not sure, but we'll see. So... I just want to throw this in there real quick, Bacchus. I'm gonna let you go. I think, I think, I think at one point in time, like Drickus was a, a a conundrum or a question mark. Nobody knew until how good he was until he beat somebody like Robert Whitaker. But now I, I don't think I don't think it's gonna happen like that again. Go ahead, Bacchus. Yeah, different type of fighters too, really. You know what I mean? Like DDP and 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 Humsat. Yeah. Two uh, so the the last time we did see Humsat was against. Uh, Bad knees, uh, come out. <laughs> and if you remember, Usman won that third round, and mm. everybody's thinking, Man, if there was just two more rounds, if there's two more rounds, he probably wins. He this time, there is more. this time, there is two more rounds, mm -hmm. and what? just like and just like Kamar Usman, Bobby Knuckles has got that champion, uh, mentality. That champion, what it takes. Um, I, I, I'm like you guys. I do think this goes. If if Robbie can withstand the first round and a half, the blitz that we know uh, Hamza comes out just from the gate. Shit, even against Gilbert Burns, he was gassed in the third fucking round. Um, in that in their fight, mm -hmm. if you recall. Now this is a little different. It, this one's at one uh, one seventy five, uh, one eighty five, not one seventy. But still, uh, the guy gets like we have not seen his gas tank, and I think that gets tested. I mm. think Bobby takes him into deep, deep waters. And you know what, folks? That's what that's what dogs do, baby. 
and reapers take you into deep waters and you can't swim with the big dog, Hamza Shemaev. Give me Bobby Knuckles as my dog on that card at plus 200, baby. I, mean, I was really for you to pull that mask out. I swear I was. I was. I didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> I think it's. I, I just think that it's it's a uh, Bobby Knuckles by decision. He wins. The, I think comes out probably wins the first round. Second, about halfway through the second, Bobby figures it out and, and then turns it on, and and uh, wins by decision here. It's going to be uh, such a good fight. Like the that to let alone to go into the main event off that yeah. fight. Like there. I don't think there have been two fights this good back to back this year alone. Like so excited. I cannot wait. Now I'm going yeah, to let's jump get in with the numbers real quick. I, uh, you know, uh, Don Davis, 3, 000, tune in. Three thousand <laughs> <laughs> out of 3,088 people, Whitaker by 51%. And uh, let's go 40, 50, 58, uh, thinking uh, by KO, TKO. And then uh, for Shemaev, 25.1% thinking KO. And the other 54 are thinking sub. What? And then somehow, somewhere, we got 20% by decision for Shemaev. So it's, 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 really, it's really close with the, uh, with the numbers on Tapology right now. Yeah, it's split. I think most, most people are split on it. Um, let's get into that exciting main event. Uh, we that. have... Yeah. None other than uh, Bla Max Blessed Holloway, 26 and 7. He's the dog at plus 200. Obviously, we know knockout of the year. Uh, I'll go ahead and give it to him from UFC 300. It's the last time we set, we saw him. The last time we saw him, he said, There's an L at the door. There's an L at the door. I am a bull. And I am a bull. I want the L at the door. I am him. Uh, and speaking of the guy who could be him, the guy that the El Matador is the featherweight champion. So Max last fought at 155, got him back down to his division at 145, mm -hmm. taking on the champion who knocked out the long reigning champion, Alec Volkanovsky, Ilya the Matador uh, Taporia. Uh, 15 and 0 is the uh, favorite at minus 245. Bobby, I know this is the fight that you've had circled on your calendar probably since UFC 300. Um, what's your thoughts here? My thoughts are I hate that I have to pick a winner in this fight because <laughs> you do. It, it is like. I want people to appreciate what this is. Like, this is undoubtedly the best versus the best. And there are very rare circumstances that you get in this scenario. Like, Ilya is undefeated and the champion. And he is, you know, I don't give a damn what the rankings say. He is fighting pretty much number one or two in the world at that weight class. Mm -hmm. um, and you just don't get stuff like this that often. And I just cannot wait for this fight to happen. It is, you know, you, you look at both their last fights. Um, the, uh, you know, it that, that last fight with Ilya was in, uh, like, California. And he heard the booze because, like, granted, this is the time that, like, you know, Volk was everyone's favorite. Volk had his coming out party. They knew who he yeah. was. He walked in there, took those booze, looked mm -hmm. confident the entire time. And I understand that his personality rubs people the uh, wrong way. Everybody. But I think people are just not used to seeing someone that is this confident and can also back up their skills like mm. max you know alluded to it oh he's just a mcgregor or wannabe and stuff like that those comparisons only get brought up when you're on that type of trajectory and you know max had the brilliant call out at 300 and yeah i at that point i didn't care about the ufc 300 main event all i was thinking about is oh when are they gonna make this hell I don't even mind that this shit's in the desert. That would normally <laughs> bother me. I don't care where it is. Like, just get them in there. 
they're going to do all the work in the cage and you know breaking it down it it could go so many different ways like Ilya's power and his quickness is just so interesting like watching like him doing the pad work granted that doesn't translate inside the cage but it's really fun to watch you know with max max is very good at putting out output and finding ways to adapt in fight he never fights the same fight you know he's always adapting so like i said we are just gonna get the best versus the best in this and if there was one fight to watch this year, it is undoubtedly this. Like if you told some of your friends to turn into the sphere because it was going to be cool and they're like, what did you have me watch? Tell them to give it one more chance on Saturday because this shit is going to be absolutely bananas. Mm. Now, all that being said, I, I know I have to make a pick and um Ilya has been very upfront with what he wants to do. And I know Max has never been stopped before, but with that power, he, Ilya looks for the knockout for 25 minutes. And, you know, I'm wondering, uh, Max definitely put on a little bit of size to go up to 55 last time. It wasn't like the Poirier fight where he just weighed in at 155 pounds. So I'm interested to see how that weight cut goes. Is that going to affect his chin at all? And, you know, I, I wasn't around uh, on the pod during the UFC 300 times, but I was pounding my chest picking Max. I thought mm -hmm. that he was going to really shine in that fight and, you know, have the perfect game plan. And he sure did. There's a reason why that fight isn't in consideration for fight of the year, because it was a one sided whooping. You mm -hmm. know, Gage yeah. he, in the end, you know, did his thing and went in the middle because Max gave him the shot. But Max pretty much dominated that the entire time so from bell to bell know. or bell to knockout really <laughs> <laughs> from so, bell to net <laughs> i know i'm probably gonna feel like a fool uh next wednesday in making this pick but um we gotta i'm do just it. really picking up what Ilya is putting down and i think he will be able to get the finish he will get the win and I'm sorry, a finish over Volk and a finish over Max. Ooh. He is undoubtedly the fighter of the year because wow. of the competition he is. No, playing. I no. understand if you want it to be potent. That's cool. I won't push back on it. But if he is able we'll, to we'll get, get to Max our award ceremony finish, in December, Bobby. <laughs> it, I, I understand the argument. But I'm sorry, if he's able to get a finish on both Volk, who is considered the pound for pound, and Max, like, Ooh. I'm sorry. We are going to Italy for the Volk rematch, and that is going to be fireworks. Wow. Mm. Or not Italy, Spain. What am I saying? Sorry. Spain. Yeah. Go ahead, Wit. Huh. <sighs> Man, all right. So y'all know me, man. If you've watched the show before, uh, the brain and the heart, they don't match oftentimes. Um, I like to make really good comparisons. You know, every once in a while we get a little nerdy on the show. So like I got a chance to watch some interviews. Uh, the Brent Okamoto stuff was pretty cool with Ilya. Um, and then I got to look back on like Max Holloway, man, just kicking it at the beach, you know, like surfing and crap and telling everybody, hey, you know. Let's not, let's not like, you know, let's don't, don't, don't go, don't go, you know, uh, doing too much sparring. You don't have to spar, blah, blah, blah. Save your brain, man. Save. And I'm like, you know what this reminds me of? That time Bruce Wayne found a way to piss off Aquaman and he just pulled all kinds of gadgets. I don't know if y'all you, know, y'all know anything about that DC lore, but um, they were showing Ilya's house and he's got, a hyperbaric chamber in a corner by his bed near his nightlight and in his gym. He's got the perfect temperature and he can bake at 450 degrees while he's wrestling and so on and so forth. 
I was like, God dang, he looked like Bruce. this is Bruce Wayne. This is Spanish Bruce Wayne we're talking about here going into the ring. And basically, we got Max Holloway, the cool surfer, skateboard guy, real laid back, real nonchalant, wants to kick it with everybody. That's Aquaman. But somehow, some way, I hate to say it, it sucks. But Bruce Wayne, without powers, normally figures out how to beat the crap out of people. Um, and this may also be another episode of that. Um, the the strengths are are, are even. The idea that uh, Bobby brought up about the weight cut um coming back down like how does that affect max's chin because max was big in the fight with gaichi he was a man he looked like a totally different person i thought he would stay right there but of course he called out a matador so we had to come back down um this is one of those ones man my heart is going all the way my heart all the way with max Holloway, but my brain is like shut the f up bro <laughs> you gotta go with the El Matador, and I and I hate the fact that he's so good, he's so talented, and this is somewhat of one of those, like, you know, this is where the division is headed. Because just like you said, what if they do have the Volk rematch plan? What if they do have it written down? Well, here goes Max's opportunity to scramble all of that up, erase all of those names off the chalkboard, and come out victorious. For me, this is an upset bound to happen, waiting to happen. Even and especially if they do that thing, you know, they said it, you know, Taporia said he wants to do the standoff, the Mexican standoff in the first 10 seconds. I don't think that's really gonna happen. I think the both fighters are actually more mature and more um, you know, knowledgeable of the other person's strengths. So I don't think they're gonna do that in particular. If it gets to the fifth round, if it get if it gets to the fifth. Max is going to call him out. I see that happening. But, man, points-wise, action-wise, it, it's it's leaning towards Taporia, man. It's really leaning towards Taporia on this one. And I hate to say it because I don't want Max to lose. I don't want him to see Max go down. One of the best strikers ever in UFC history. 168 significant strikes landed in a match. That is freaking ridiculous. I don't even put 168 grains of rice in a pot. When I cook, but <laughs> God dog it, you know, it's, it's, it's just, this is, this is it right here. This is what you watch UFC for right here, man. But once again, the brain says to Portia, but the heart definitely wants Max on this one, man. So, and still, man, and still, and I got it. I'm saying that in a disappointing fashion, as you can tell. So I have, I was, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was like, woke up this morning. I'm I'm Max all the way. Uh, I, like last two weeks, I'm Max all the way. Max going. I really like. My heart says Max. Uh, like with, like, man, I'm just gonna pick with. I'm picking Max. I'm picking Max. I'm picking Max. Then like it. I I just look at Max right now, and I feel like something is like he don't look healthy. Like the weight cuts already. If I feel like his face is sunken in already, um, it, it, it's the I don't like the couple months at one weight class you went and just fought, and then the, go down back down. I don't like that. I don't think that's healthy for the body. Um, and we've saw we've seen that happened the last couple of times with a couple of guys, right? We just, uh, Volkanovski, right? Like just fought at 155, was 145, went to 155 and lost, and then back down to 145, lost. I, it doesn't really work out for a lot of guys. Um, in fact, it doesn't. I don't think it works out for really anybody uh, that's trying to go between two weights. Usually at one point in time, they kind of, I guess it worked out for Henry Cejudo uh, somewhat. Um so I've, I've been all Holland. in on, huh? <laughs> Kevin Holland, but I don't think that really counts. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't not elite guys, elite, elite guys. Um, and, and Kevin Holland, it seems like every time he fights at one eighty-five, he's been or every. It doesn't matter. Uh I just so I, I was all in on Max, and I just want to point this out. I don't. 
the, I am on a cold streak uh, when it comes to picking the UFC main events on these pay-per-views. Um, I, I looked at it this morning, and I was like, man, I probably haven't picked a – the last main event I picked right for on the pay-per-views was way back at uh, UFC 303. I picked uh, Alex to beat Yuri. Um, I think other than that. I don't think I, I have, was on the show then. <laughs> I, yeah, I've, I think I've, I've gone cold. I picked, uh, yeah, 299, 300. I was right, but, uh, <laughs> whew, sorry. Yeah, so I've been cold. I haven't picked one right since UFC 303, um, on the main event. So, my what I probably should have went first and gave you guys that information, but, uh, <laughs> sorry. Something's got me here. I'm going and still UFC featherweight champion of the world. The I think we see Max get knocked out the first time in his career. Whoa, knock out, bro. God dang. Oh, man. What? I'm probably wrong. I've been wrong. Like I said, I'm on a cold streak. So, yeah, I, I thought you set that up to be like, I'm on a cold streak, but fuck that. I'm rolling with Max. And I was like, <laughs> give it to me. And, um, hey, mate, you know. A lot of the times when we all agree on something, we're completely wrong. We're completely freaking wrong. So, um, yeah. You know, like I said, I kind of want to throw the picks aside and just appreciate the, the you know, once in a lifetime unique fight that we're getting from these guys. And, you know, there's no way that this shit doesn't deliver. All right, guys. Yeah, he's, know he's I got right. I do, too. I think that. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, you know, just giggle and thinking about it. I don't know. I was just as hyped for Roundtree Pierre, and that one absolutely delivered. I think this fight will deliver, uh, as well. So, uh, what I like about it is it's uh, kind of midday, so I'm not like trying to keep myself awake, uh, trying to uh, watch the fight. So, I think that's well, a plus for me. And I'm very happy that this fight is not in Utah. So, yeah, we like, go. It, it was originally going to be the main event in Utah. So, yeah, you know. Um, they they get treated right in Abu Dhabi, so um, sure. you know they're both uh, like living on a pretty good high, and um, you know I think the presser might be uh, a little bit later tonight because you know with the time change and stuff it comes out a little uh, better, but I mean my hype levels could not be higher for this fight. Like, and I was intentionally trying to, like not to look at the media and stuff but the second i watched that countdown it was like oh like if, if you're gonna get one pay-per-view this year this is definitely the one yeah this will be a oh numbers out y'all know me but uh th this will be a fun one as well uh speaking of fun we'll have some more fun uh next wednesday night right here again uh for a new episode of head kicks and haymakers eight o'clock central nine eastern uh we appreciate all the everybody in the chat so uh make sure you like subscribe share um uh, i'll be back uh sunday sunday morning for a uh my morning dump show i do with uh my guy johnny cruz uh plus uh, uh eight o'clock uh as well that night uh so press conference in 10 hours thanks a um plus sunday night we do an nfl recap you can catch all that right here on this uh if you like and subscribe uh other than that folks be a friend tell a friend we'll be back next wednesday for a new episode of head kicks and haymakers we'll react to everything uh ufc uh 308 and maybe it's and still so our I mean, and new. It, let me ask you before we got here: If you're Alexander Volkanovsky, who are you rooting for? Volk is definitely going with Max. That's a, that's an easy one. Volk is going with Max. I, I, considering he gets the title shot either way, I think he would much rather prefer Max. However, I think the competitor in him wants it to be Ilya, 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think Volk would take that fight in Spain. I know he's asking, trying to get uh, Ilya to fight him in Australia. I think that's more just old man Volk trolling because he knows that ain't happening. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's uh, either way, I think it's going to work out for him. So it doesn't make too much of a difference. The question is, are they going to bring him in the cage after? I would argue, um, give this moment to whoever wins this epic war. I'm and, going with you on that one, B, uh, straight up and down. The thing is, he's going to go with Max to win a friend connection. But if Max loses, he's going to want to rip Taporia's head off in Spain. I like it. Yeah, I, I, I think he wants Ilya, too, as the competitor in him to, to get that. And I think... I mean, he's going to get the title shot anyway, uh, but I don't really know. I think at the UFC, I'd rather see Alex Volk in, in Tuporia 2 more than Max Alex 4. So, yeah. What's how that song said that the young kids like? To get back a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. We'll see you next week, 8 o'clock Central, 9 Eastern. See y'all. Shout out to A for feeding this information in the chat. That is so great. Appreciate Thanks, it.